Buenos días. Buenos Good morning. Días Good morning, everyone. I can't see anything from here, but it doesn't matter. Well, the first thing I would like to do is to uh, say a big thank you to the organizers at FIPMAS for giving me the opportunity to be here with you. You're probably wondering why I'm showing an image like this. Back in Christmas, I had the opportunity to share some time with the team at the Oceanographic Museum in Valencia. This is one of the largest um, water tanks in the whole of the European Union. At a certain point during that meeting, I posed a question to them. I asked them, who would you like to resemble? Would you like to resemble a zoo? Or would you like to resemble the Cirque du Soleil? What do you think they answered? I'm, un I'm asking. Most of the people in the team said they would prefer to um, resemble the Cirque du Soleil. You, you will probably agree with me in that Cirque du Soleil has a lot of magic to it. Every year they have a new production. They stun us, they amaze us with the costumes, the lighting the audio. So in fact, I think they have reinvented the traditional concept of circus. We are living at a time with a lot of magic. A lot of people say that we are moving away from the time of information to the time of imagination. Skills like creativity and innovation are key elements for anything we want to achieve in the 21st century. So where are we now exactly? We are at a time where we as members of uh, society are hyper-connected to each other. Everything is digitized. Companies base their success on the effective use of this technology and their ability to transform digital leader organizations. The new generations are coming, millennials included, accounting for more than 34% of the entire population. By 2020, they will account for more than half of the population. This is a generation that has a very clear spirit for entrepreneurship. They're more willing to collaborate. They're looking for a much closer leadership style. They want recognition and immediate feedback from everyone else. And they're very clear about the need to choose properly the company they want to work for. Because they know if they make the wrong choice, they may be rendered obsolete. These are people looking for much more inspiring offices, office spaces where they can develop their ideas, where they can be inspiring. They look for spaces where they can access everyone in the organization. And the technological revolution is here to stay something that is changing at an exponential rate with um, disruptive changes. Unlike the evolution of human beings and the evolution of the brain, which is much more linear. Google forecasts that by 2020, we're talking four years from now, maximum, by 2020, everyone will be connected to the internet. An article came out a few days ago telling us about a report from the United Nations where they state that India has more connected users than the United States. Microsoft, in their report on cyberspace for 2025, forecasts that there will be more than 25 billion mobile phones. We have new technologies coming along, virtual reality, augmented reality. All large companies, Google, Microsoft, Facebook, Apple, they're all investing heavily in this technology. Pay attention to this. Augmented reality will transform industries like construction, maintenance, medicine, education. We have big data, artificial intelligence, Internet of Things. They say that by 2020, we'll move from 20 to 30 billion connected objects. We have smart cities coming along, smart buildings. 
La industria 4.0. Industry 4.0. The Internet of Things is revolutionizing industries such as medicine. We have all sorts of sensors which will allow us to have data in real time, to monitor the state of disease, to monitor the state of diagnosis. And we have 3D printing, something that can lead to a reduction of up to 90% in manufacturing. This is telling us clear that we are facing a world of VUCA, VUCA, volatile, uncertain, complex and ambiguous. So, my first question, or the first question I would like to pose, how do we see this future? To what extent can we leverage everything we've done so far, everything we've been so far? all of our experiences so that we can face all the challenges that we have to face for the 21st century. I'm sorry about that. We have to start getting ourselves ready for this uh, race for digital transformation. Our first approach could be taking a look at other organizations, see what they are doing to transform themselves, what they are changing, one of the main things they're clear about is that they want to generate fans. They want to make their customers become fans or followers. You don't make any difference through your products or services. You make a difference through the experience that your users get through those products and services. Therefore, organizations are investing in programs that are focused around user experiences. They want to generate memories, solid emotional bonds with their customers. So they take any opportunity to interact, to find out about their customers' perceptions. There's something I really like. This is a quote by Philip Kotler, which says, getting to know the customer it's much more than selling a product or selling a service. It is about understanding the world surrounding the customer. Those companies that really want to make a difference will be the companies co-creating with the customer. The companies with the ability to create a loving relationship that will make the customers and employees vibrate with them. For a brand to make sense, Outwards, it has to make sense inwards. Therefore, companies are clear about one more thing. They want to make their, the, uh, their employees loyal followers. They're very clear about one thing. The first interaction of any customer is usually with the employees. The goal is to make employees become prescribers of the brand. Companies are getting more concerned about the social capital they have through their employees. Leverage that human capital. Para ello, han puesto mucho esfuerzo en generar culturas fuertes. So they make an effort, a considerable effort to create solid cultures with a shared vision, a shared culture, with corporate values which are aligned with the values of those people working for them. Every time we talk about the values of an organization, we're talking about the essence, about the essence of the people working for that company, how they make decisions, how they work, what their offices look like. Whenever we talk about values, if we talk about individual values, that would mean who I am, what my identity is all about. How am I, what am I like, and how I behave. That's the reason why companies are moving from hiring based on skills to recruitment based on values. Companies that have transformed themselves have committed themselves to creativity and innovation. They are clear that they must commit themselves to fostering the creativity of their teams. And in order to achieve success, in order to make people generate ideas, it is clear for them that innovation has to go away from just one department. It has to be cross-sectional 
and permeate the entire organization. That's why they look for collaborative collaborative spaces. It is clear that technology nowadays allows us to work anywhere at any point in time. Therefore, there's no longer the, uh, any difference between working areas and people. Companies are creating inspiring spaces such as the space we see here. These are offices for Microsoft. We see different working spaces depending on the type of duties to be performed in each one of them. The companies that make it through will be the ones that have the skills to develop their own collective intelligence and leverage their capacity to learn. In order to develop their collective intelligence, what companies are doing is creating parallel structures. On top of the existing infrastructures, they're creating corporate social media, where they want to connect talent, where they can manage internal knowledge. Corporate social media, where they generate communities. They build communities for learning, communities for improvement, communities for innovation. There's another quote I really like, something mentioned by Andrew Robertson, who is the CEO for BBDO, a major marketing agency. We don't really see digital as a technology or a platform or a medium. We think of it as a language, something you use to express ideas and create magical experiences that people choose to participate in and as a consequence change their behavior and this is personal and professional and social at the same time. Therefore, if we want to get ready for this digital transformation, we need to be clear about one thing. Digital transformation must start with a change in our behavior, a change in the way we do things, a change in the way we work, a change in the way we think. Because what we're dealing with here, at a time of change, what we're dealing with here is about generating new perspectives. So what are the first steps? Creating healthy cultures, collaborative cultures, where people have the opportunity to exchange information, where people can develop their creativity. Cultures, physical spaces that improve the physical, mental and emotional state of people using those spaces. We need cultures that welcome diversity because this is one of the best ways to face the challenge of the uncertainty we live in. We've talked about culture and the next step would be understanding the skill map that we need for digital transformation. Almost all companies have started developing their own digital skills. There's even a new position called the Chief Digital Manager. They want to develop their own analytical skills, the ability to extract information from data, and based on that information make the right decisions. Developing social intelligence, the ability to manage as part of a network, the ability to manage multidisciplinary teams, global projects, and collective intelligence that we mentioned a few minutes ago. This is what most companies have started already. Going beyond, and this is what uh, is especially difficult for organizations, is develop, implies developing critical thinking. Critical thinking implies questioning how we do things. This is very complicated. This demands a lot of courage. People have to be brave to develop critical thinking in their own organizations. We said before that it is necessary to develop creativity, to develop new ideas, to foster innovation and to focus on agility, 
empieza a ponerse en valor una de las competencias que es la intuición. We're starting to leverage on one of our skills, our instinct, our subconscious intelligence, which combined with data will allow us to be much more competitive in the products and services we launch. In order to follow this journey, how can we approach all of the elements? We need to build organizations that are much more horizontal by nature. We need to create inspiring spaces, spaces that foster creativity, spaces where people can exchange information and have a much more fluid communication. In what direction are the organizations of the 21st century moving? I'm doing fine with time. Okay. So in what direction are the organizations moving in the 21st century? Let me go back to a previous block of my presentation. They want to become to make their customers become followers, become fans of the organization. They want to uh, make a difference on their customers.